Welcome to our presentation on the cycles of matter. Matter cycles in and out of an ecosystem. Matter on the earth is always always stays here and doesn't leave. There's always the same amount of material uh, since the beginning of time. Water cycles through the environment, the, the hydrocycle. Water, hydrocycle or water cycle is a circular path of water on the earth. Um, all organisms have bodies made mostly of water, so this is a pretty important cycle. We've got, um, again, the precipitation coming in from, say, oceans is the big source, and that uh, hits mountains or comes over the land. It comes down as precipitation precipitation, rain, sleet, snow. It runs off down to rivers and lakes. There's some evaporation at that point. It stays over the land. Um, transpiration is the giving up of water through plants. Plants use a tremendous amount of water. They take it up from their roots to their leaves and some of that is lost back to the air. It's transpiration. So that all goes into getting it up into the atmosphere. Precipitation brings it back down and either underground or on rivers and lakes ultimately it all drains to the ocean where the, heat, the sun will heat up the evaporation or the water and evaporate it again and the cycle continues. Elements uh, essential for life cycle also include a bio a geochemical cycle which is a movement of particular chemicals through the biological and geological parts of a system. Uh, one of those things that don't, doesn't get used a lot in biology and life is the sulfur. A lot of sulfur is released from uh, volcanoes. Uh, carbon dioxide and water released from volcanoes. So the geology can also contribute to this cycle. The main process involved in the oxygen cycle though is photosynthesis and respiration. We talked about this in first semester. Photosynthesis captures or it has sunlight and carbon dioxide and water and makes sugar and oxygen. And then in respiration, the sugar and oxygen in a mitochondria are with special enzymes converted to carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. So there's your cycle of the oxygen in, in water and free oxygen and carbon in carbon dioxide and in sugar. It cycles through and cycles through. It just keeps cycling and cycling and cycling through the biosphere. Oxygen cycles indirectly through the atmosphere by recycling other nutrients as well. Here we have oxygen, respiration, we just talked about, carbon dioxide, photosynthesis. It gets locked up into carbon dioxide, into water, um, H2O is water, um, and, and, and then it's released as in photosynthesis as just pure oxygen to be breathed by living creatures, plants and animals, by the way, and then uh, through that respiration uh, get broken back down into carbon dioxide and water. So you can see the oxygen cycle, the carbon cycle, and the water cycle are all very much related. Carbon is the building block of life. Carbon, the carbon cycle moves carbon from the atmosphere to the food web and turns it to the atmosphere. Um, it's also emitted by burning fossil fuels. So we're releasing a lot more carbon in these last hundred years into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide than uh, we ever have since uh, the Industrial Revolution began. Uh, some carbon is stored in long periods of time called sinks. These carbon sinks are the oil and coal that you see in, um, um, in the ground. That's what these carbon sinks are. And here we have uh, an example of uh, carbon dioxide in the uh, respiration and fossil fuels being dumped into sinks um, and in respiration brings it back into the atmosphere so it brings in the human aspect of the carbon cycle a little bit. Nitrogen cycle takes place mostly underground. Some bacteria convert uh, gaseous nitrogen into ammonia through a process called nitrogen fixation. That's why these bacteria are extremely valuable to us. And important. Some people think bacteria is all bad, not this bacteria. Some nitrogen fixing bacteria live in nodules on roots of plants and others live freely in the soil. And they take the very, very stable nitrogen in the air and convert it into ammonia or uh, uh, nitrates. Here we have a little example of that. Uh, things are dying, decomposing. The nitrogen in the living things is in the form of protein 
and then um, it can be returned to the soil through decomposition, uh, also into the atmosphere, and the nitrogen-fixing bacteria will help to take that stable nitrogen and put it back into the form of nitrogen that can be used in life's processes. Ammonia is released into the soil, is transferred into ammonia. Nitrogen, nitrifying bacteria change the ammonium into nitrate, and nitrogen moves through the food chain mainly in the form of protein and returns to the soil during decomposition. Phosphorus cycle takes place at and below the ground level. Phosphorus is released by the weathering of rocks. Phosphorus moves through the food chain and returns to the soil during decomposition, the breakdown of living things and back into their nutrients. Phosphorus leaches into groundwater from soil and is locked into sediments. Both mining and agriculture can add phosphorus to the environment. Too much phosphorus in lakes and rivers can cause algae blooms. The rain, geological uplifting, the weathering of the rocks puts these minerals into the uh, biosphere and it cycles around. Um, again, never leaves the earth, just keeps cycling around. It's possible that the sediments will form down at the bottom of a lake or river and form new new rocks which at some point thousands and thousands of years in the future may be geologically uplifted and you know brought back into the system <laughs>